Well, hello. Uh, welcome to Pete's One Night Project. And uh, tonight I am going to introduce you to this 36 volt, uh, 4 amp hour McAllister uh, battery and charger. Now, I wouldn't have bought this if it hadn't been for the fact that it was reduced from £129 down to 34 And there was a second one down from, I believe, 100 to £31. And that was the 2.6 amp hour version of this battery and charger. Designed ordinarily to run the uh, 36 volt uh, range that McAllister do, which is, I believe, B&Q's own brand. Or better than that, B&Q does two brands, Performance Power and McAllister. So this being the better brand with the uh, two year guarantee. Now, I bought one of these and I couldn't help myself, so I bought another. So inside, basically, you get a battery and a charger. But we don't want that. We don't need that bit just yet. What we're after is that one and that one. Now, I quite like these battery packs. They're really heavy, really well built. 36 volt, 4 amp hour, 20 cells inside. Got a nice touch button. Giving you four bars there. Take that away for a second. Let's have a look. We show positive on one side, negative on the other. You can't see that. Let's zoom in. So, we would expect to get about 40 volts. Please. 41.2 volts. Okay, that's not bad. Now, if we take 10 lithium ion cells and put them in series, you normally get around 42 volts. I believe this charger is set up to slightly undercharge them, which is good, which is good. So we've got 40 volts. What can we do with 40 volts? Well, not much. So what I'm proposing is taking the guts out of the second charger and using two buck converters. Sorry, two buck converters, one's already wired. Um, to drop the voltage down to either 12 volts for low, um, low powered appliances, lights and things. Um, maybe even 12 volt pump. And the second one, to drop the voltage down to only 21 volts. And that will be 21 volts to power my laptop. Now, there's going to be some problems in doing this. But I'll just show you the inside of the battery first. Because I was quite surprised. Now I've already taken the screws out. They're security screws, but you can just use a simple small flat blade screwdriver which defeats the object. Having said that, I'm going to have trouble getting this open. There we go. Two catches. Don't need them. Um, I undid the sticky earlier, so it doesn't really make much difference. A whole lot comes out in one lump. Um, nice big heat sink on top. Nice big four terminals on top, four bladed. Got the power meter on the end. And if we look at the side profile, um, it does actually come with the um, insulation strip on both sides, but I've just taken one off. That is pretty, isn't it? That's 20 cells. So we'd expect mm, two amp hour cells. In, uh, two, in, 2 in series, 2 in parallel. What am I talking about? 10 in series, 2 in parallel. Um, yes. And you can see where you have the ne uh, negative side and the positive side and the tab. Negative sides, positive sides. And it is pretty pretty neat how they've done it. And uh, nicely soldered on top. But if we look at the bottom of the battery, we can actually see, getting the right way up, we have Samsung cells. So, if you're looking for cheap or relative, relatively cheap branded 2 amp hour cells, 18650 kind, then run down to B&Q and buy these because uh, they're quite they're very heavily discounted because end of season. And whether I don't know whether McAllister are doing away with them or not, but 
uh, I am quite interested in, in adapting these for my ends. So, what problems have we got? Well, we know that the voltage of the packs is 40 volts. I know I can drop it down to power my laptop because I rigged something up the other day. But the problem we've got is the charger. The charger has three pins. Negative, positive. It's missing the fourth blade. And the fourth blade on the battery is the one we need uh, for, what is it? Uh, negative, giving us the negative. So, if I set the meter up, Mm -hmm. it's that pin that we're missing the negative so meter says if we have positive on here and negative oh you can't see right okay so if we're missing this negative on this side can we take power off the next pin which is uh, for the charging so positive on there negative on there we're showing 28 volts. So no, we can't. Because if we go to the real negative, we're showing 41 volts. So I don't really want to back feed or go through with the electronics because I might fry it. So the problem is the charger. It needs that fourth pin. Now I've drawn a pencil mark on there for good reason because we have to move one of these blades over. Now you can see what I'm going to do with this charger. I'm going to take the guts out well, say you take the guts out. I've actually already taken the guts out. And uh, as I've got them out, there we go. Nice big capacitor. Make sure you discharge that first. Because it almost got me. Uh, and uh, lots and lots of uh, interesting bits, which I'm going to keep in case I fry the other one. So. Let's have a look inside. I know I am supplementing the light in here with a 10 watt LED and it's uh, creating horrible shadows. So basically, empty LED lamps on the top and the three bladed connectors. So if we release that screw, there was two. I was quite surprised to see that it all falls out. And of course, yes, I did have to cut these connectors. It all comes out. And they're just clipped in. So my plan will be to move that negative over on the... Nah, card went for. I had to delete everything off my card. Ah, where did I get to? Um, yeah, I need to take the negative uh, connector for charge off of there and move it over to the next slot. Which means we have to cut out the, the relative area on the top. So, um, first things first, uh, I'm going to go and cut this and, and put this together um, and then figure out what we're going to put inside. I'll be back shortly. Right, so I've finished the modifications. Um, basically, uh, some idiot cut the hole on the wrong side of the line, so I have made a pig's ear of it. But on the plus side, it does work, it does fit. And what I've just done is just resoldered the connector uh, to the connector on the back. We just have two terminal blocks there uh, for test reasons. I'm going to bring in the battery, plug that in, bring the meter into view, and the two terminals. There we go positive, negative, and there we have. 41.1 volts. Okay, so that is working as, as it should. Um, take that off, take that off, turn this back around, and now we need to figure out how we're going to fit two uh, buck converters inside, one for 12, one for 21 volts, and hopefully I would like somehow to fit a fan in there as well. So, just bear with me whilst I have a fiddle uh, with these and see. Oh, flux 
spin thing. If there's a, if there's any chance in in hell that these will fit in. Won't fit that way. Okay. Well, we know we'll fit them in sideways. Will we fit a fan in the center? Nope. Okay. Now it's time for plan B. That should fit in. That came from a skip. I don't know if it works yet, though. Uh, so, it's a heat sink for some sort of CPU. So, And that won't fit in there either. Okay. Can we fit it in long ways? So we can fit it in that way, which is good, because that way we can keep both, oh, it's falling apart. That way you can keep both sets cool. Of course, we may have to remove the uh, pin which holds the uh, old PS PCB on. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. So now it's a case of um, starting to wire. Now, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to connect. Um, what I'm going to do is basically connect loads of leads onto them. I'm going to make them long so I can cut them down and uh, put everything together. And then I'll show you the finished result. <laughs> 